Good morning, folks. Starting with an update to this morning's Twitter alerts. The earthquake signatures in China have been downgraded to M6.9. Luckily, the sparsely populated region is likely to be left barely worse for wear after the event. Small farms only. Excellent animation from JPL here using processed images of Saturn during an auroral outbreak. They went a little SO style with their music too. Made me smile. For those who don't know, Roy Spencer, PhD. He's the latest in our getting to know the climate guys. He's an ex-NASA scientist. Doesn't see eye to eye with me on the cooling, but he thrashes the mainstream global warming propaganda in impressive fashion. I also recommend his Global Warming 101 segment if you're new here. Back to a man you've heard us name before. Duke University's Scafetta does it again, showing problems with the satellite data resulting in overestimation of human warming effects and an underappreciation for the sun. If it seems like scientists are now losing their fear of going against the global warming agenda, one after another, maybe it's because they know they're not alone and they've got a tsunami on their side riding hard at the coastline now. We're coming. And while we're on that topic, terrific response to yesterday's video on our homepage, Climate Number 4. The latest in the series remains free on the website homepage today for all, but you may also consider going to our blog to see the full transcript of the video, all the links, and lots of complimentary information. Mr. Loafer Loafer did a great job making this fully interactive blog post. Top weather watches today, starting in the U.S. where the cold continues coming south in the east and a serious convergence will continue to lock down the area in ice and snow. Please be careful today, and if your area declares a winter emergency, there's a good reason. Weather shares from the south are appreciated. Coming to Europe, specifically England, yeah, that's another one. It's just as strong as the last bunch, drawing a ton of moisture just up the east coast onto the continent into what is once again the most powerful pressure cell in the northern hemisphere. What can I say? This flood map's going to look worse before it looks better bit of a lighter day down under. We've got scattered rain in Australia and New Zealand, but the bulk of it indeed remains coming from the cyclone remnant. And look, it's still able to draw moisture from both the North and South Seas. Solar wind is showing some variability, but in the calm trend. KP confirms that quiet. The solar flaring, however, did exactly what we expected. We've taken multiple M flares since yesterday's news, all from that beastly region of focus in the center. There's certainly ejecta heading our way as confirmed by NOAA's Enlil Spiral. Couldn't tell you what NASA's thinking on theirs, but I'll fully support this one and a prediction of a weak impact to Earth on Friday. The sunspots appear to have the sun in check, dominating the disk, but the underlying magnetic shutdown of our star renders mature, developed, active regions benign as the day of their birth. The central grouping would be a major X-flare concern if not for that magnetic weakening. Even still, the complexity of umbral magnetics at the backside of that sunspot group has proven able to generate significant energy and to eject plasma. It's our top solar watch today. Let's hope the lack of casualties in China can be confirmed. Remember that we have some planetary geometry of note coming up here with Mercury about to conjoin the Sun as Jupiter and Venus break their long duration geocentric opposition. Shots of our star in the current conditions to close. If you didn't see climate number four yesterday, please shoot over the website and check it out. The series should be bringing together the macro scale interdisciplinary arguments. Eyes open. No fear at 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.